Hello everyone. Welcome back to this course on Selenium WebDriver 3.0. I welcome back to you uh, to Ejureka, the instructor-led uh, online training portal. So in our today's class, we are going to deal in depth about XPath functions and also the synchronization that you will have to achieve in your Selenium. Okay, so we were discussing about your locators, which are the techniques of identifying the web elements on a web page. In that we dealt that there are eight different locators. Amongst those, few are very popular and few and are very oftenly used, right? So they are your ID, your name, your XPath, and also your CSS selectors, right? So these are you know uh, often used and one important functions or one important locator that we have to know about is your xpath why because your xpath as we discussed in the previous class would deal with the dom structure of your web application so when i say dom it is the way the application has been built so the expansion of dom is document object module right so it talks about the address of a web element on a web page so when it is effective and it is very easy for us to write our own experts so the challenges that we face when we start working with your applications are your ids can be dynamic wherein every time you launch an application every time you try to inspect an element the id is generated dynamically and it keeps changing which means it is not stable so in that case your id doesn't hold good right and also when you talk about your class your class is again a duplicate why because group of similar items will be kept under a class and obviously when you try to identify elements it would be a duplicate address right and of course the other locators like your tag name cannot be used because one application or a page can have multiple elements created using the same tag for example if you take an application like your gmail so your username and your password both are of input type right which means they are text boxes so if you use the input tag or the div tag or whatever then obviously it is going to identify multiple elements on a web page right so in that case we are not going to use your tag name as a locator and next when we talk about other locators like your link text and the partial link text so these are applicable only on your links right so apart from your links you cannot use anything or it cannot be used on any other web element in that case the only locator which comes to our help is your xpath so which has multiple way of writing the xpaths and also there are tools which helps you to identify these xpaths on a browser so let's get started with how to work with the xpath and here are our objectives on what we are going to learn in our today's session right so after completing this module we should be able to describe what an xpath is understand the different types of xpaths use the xpath for handling complex and dynamic elements describe weights and its type understand what is meant by validation and create browser profile so browser profiling we are not going to worry about your browser profiling because most of the times we don't set this browser profile but we'll understand it on a basic level okay so to start with we have already seen what an xpath is in our previous class but again here we are going to deal in depth right if you see here xpath is used to find the location of any web element on a web page using its html or xml tags and their attributes so we have already seen what a tag is so how a web application would be built and what these attributes are right so for example when you take a name of, of a person so that becomes the attribute of that person one of the attribute of that person likewise if you take a name of a text box then that becomes the attribute of that particular text box so this is how you deal with the tags and its attributes right so it is also called xpath because its syntax is in the form of a path followed by your forward slashes so we've already seen how a xpath would be written right so it is always uh, denoted using forward slashes be it a single or a uh, double forward slash 
So here is the syntax of how you write an X path, which we have already seen in the previous class as well on a, on a basic level, right? So your X path always starts with the two forward slashes. So what kind of X path is it? It is a relative X path. Why do we call it a relative X path? Because it is starting from the current node, correct? So if it is an absolute X path, it always starts with the parent node and it starts with a single forward slash. So when you talk about a relative X path, it starts with the current node. And it always starts with the two forward slashes, right? Followed by the tag name and within the braces, within the square braces, you give the attribute and this attribute is always followed by this particular at the rate symbol. This should be preceded, right? is equal to the value of that particular attribute. So this image itself is self describing, right? It says what they are, what are the attributes that we can select? What are the tag names that we can come across? And what are the attribute name? Attribute name may be your ID, your name, your label, your text or whatever. So this is how you work with it. And here is there is a note. There is no space between the text in the actual syntax. So there should not be any space provided. So these spaces are still allowed. OK, these spaces are still allowed. But when you give the actual value here, there shouldn't be any space. So that is what you notice. Notice reading. Right, so we're going to learn, uh, you know, how to write all these X paths for a multiple elements. OK, so before that we'll understand the understand the basics of your X paths. OK, here are the different types of X paths which you guys would be knowing by now. So two things are absolute X path and are relative X path. So what do you mean by an absolute X path? So it is the direct way to find an element on the web page. So this can you see the element which is given here the X path which has been given. So this is the characteristic of an absolute X path, which means it starts or begins with a single forward slash and it always starts from the root element. So the main advantage of this absolute X path is if the location of the element changes, then it's going to fail right this is one of the main disadvantage of your absolute x path see the advantage is you can identify an element of course but what is the disadvantage think the you are building an application right the the developer is building an application later on the requirement keeps changing because most of us follow the agile methodology of working with your application development right so every now and then the requirement change every now and then the application change right in that case think there is an addition of another tag in between here so in that case this particular x path will fail why because the x path or the address that you have given has changed right so that is the reason never go with your absolute x path when the application is not completely stable, right? So most of the times we don't prefer it at all. And uh, if you want to find the X path of an element, always go with your relative X path and not your absolute X path. So before that, here we are going to talk about the examples of your absolute X path. So if you want to see here, you have been provided with examples wherein you have to find the absolute X path of this email or phone tag or the web element on a Facebook page. Correct. So in that case, what you are going to do? See, you will have to. These are the following steps, so we'll not go just go through it, but instead I'll show you later. OK, we are going to find it later using a tool or a plugin and I'll show how it generates. OK, we'll, we'll start installing it and then we are going to identify it. So let's uh, you know, stop skip these modules. And now the main disadvantage of your absolute X path is fine for finding elements in small programs. But if the program is too bulky, just think how lengthy your X path will have to write, right? This is already a known fact, right? We were discussing so if at all the web element is at the end of the page, then what will happen, right? So that would be a problem. 
and that is when we go and write your relative x path so it starts with your current node and also the x path will be very much smaller right so this is what your relative x path is in relative x path the path does not start from the root of the html structure so it always starts from the current node and it starts with a double forward slash right so there's no need of writing your long x paths as in case of your absolute x path so the same thing we are going to work and we are going to understand about your tools right so first what we are going to do is we are going to work with your plugins which are already present in your what to say which is available for your mozilla firefox and then we are going to work with them okay so here is your mozilla firefox so the version that we have to go with your mozilla firefox is not your current version make sure your version is within 56 okay not beyond 56 so even your 50 to 54 would work well so if you go with 48 48 to 50 54 it works perfectly fine okay so 56 is also allowed so now two important plugins that you'll have to download one is your firebug the second one is your firepath so how do we install your firebug and your firepath so these are the plugins which are specifically for your firefox browser so how do we download it so just go to this menu okay go to this options or you can go to this add-ons instead of options go to this add-ons when you go to this add-ons go to your extensions okay mine is already there so you don't have to worry about this i'll tell you how to find your firebug and firepath so here on your search all add-ons button just type in firebug okay and start searching so once you search it if there's nothing installed on your system so this would be the first option that would come up okay this firebug is the first option that would come up so, so once it comes up just click on on the click on the install button so once you click on the install button it is going to get installed on your mozilla firefox browser likewise go and type for your firepath okay so just type for your fire path and once you find the fire path all you have to do is install that as well so once you install these are the two important add-ons or plugins that is required for your xpath identification so you have two plugins installed so once after the installation you will have to restart your chrome browser sorry mozilla firefox browser right so it asks you to restart so you don't have to restart after every plugin installation instead install both and then you can restart it okay so once you have restarted you would be able to see this symbol on your mozilla firefox browser so how do you activate this just click on this and it gets activated okay so or you can just go here and you can say activate okay so that is also possible just by clicking on it you will be able to activate this fire bug right so once you have this fire bug your fire path will automatically get integrated with your fire bug itself which means you don't have to start your fire path okay individually so instead your fire path will get integrated with your fire bug itself now how do i identify the elements the first open whichever uh, you know a web application that you're going to inspect okay here i'm going with what i'm going with your facebook.com so now i'm going to activate my firebug so once i activate my firebug there are three important things that you should know in your firebug so one is your inspector if you can see here so there is an arrow symbol which shows that it is an inspector which means this is the symbol which helps you to find the address of any element on a web page okay so if you just click on that it gets highlighted so once it gets highlighted all you have to do is just go and place your cursor on that particular web element and it will show you the address of it so the second one that you'll have to know is about your html page right so this is where you will be able to find the source code of the entire application right so this html is the place where you get the entire code 
so what you do when you just identify this element you will be able to see the tag name the attribute of it the value of it and how and what are the different what to say attributes that are linked to it so this is how you're going to identify an element the third one is your fire path so what is this fire path an additional add-on which we actually downloaded and installed on your firefox in order to generate your x path so this fire path is basically to generate your x path automatically so as we have discussed there are two types of x path one is your absolute x path and the other one is your relative x path right so how do you find out the absolute x path and how do you find out the relative x path if you go here you have a drop down just click on that if you say generate absolute x path and then if you try to identify any element so this is the x path which is generated for your first name field of your facebook application so if you can see this is how it is you know designed right so it has considered only your open tags and not the closed tags if you see after your html your body is there though this application has your head so i'll show you though this application has your head can you see your head would have been closed be before your body itself i'll show you where it is can you see there are multiple tags that have been created in the head but all the tags have been closed right so that is the reason it does not consider this closing tags but instead it has considered only your open tags right i'll show you the closing tag of your head as well let me just drag it okay so now these are the scripts that has been written so do not bother about it yes so we found it here can you see this so this head has been closed which means the closed tag is not considered by your x path right so this is how you generate your absolute x path and the second way of generating your x path is or the second x path generation would be like this if you uncheck this right if you uncheck this option and then you go ahead and inspect this element then what it is going to do it is going to generate your relative x path so this relative x path is a little different from the syntax that you have already seen so that x path holds good when you start writing your own x path to identify any element since this is auto generated it doesn't bother about the tag name so any tag for that matter if it has a id called this u underscore zero underscore l then it is going to identify that particular element uniquely and it is going to perform some action on that particular element got it so this is how you make use of the plugins that are available for your mozilla firefox and then you start working with them all right now we are going to see what are the different types of xpart that are there and how we actually work with them right so now i'm going to write down xparts okay i'm going to use this application all right let me do it here so let me use this facebook.com right now what i'm going to do i'm going to write a script okay so here i'm going to create a class new class i say xpart demo right so i'll show you all the different types of xpart that can be generated use in our today's session right so let me write it here so everything remains the same like uh, you know setting your system property launching the browser also remains the same so it's changes from your driver dot get method so this driver dot get method is used in order to navigate through the applications url or to open an application right so let me pass this here we go i'm going to pass this here so what i've done i have just launched the browser and i have navigated through the url so this is done so let's start writing your x paths here so let me write it absolute x path so let me generate it using your firebug and your firepath and i'm going to just copy the x path okay so here i'm going to place it right so this is what we are going to do so how do i write 
i say web element right web element first name is equal to driver dot find element what do i do by dot x path so in our uh, selenium there's no option to identify an element by absolute x path or relative x path but instead we call it as x path itself right so for this what i'm going to do later on i'm going to send keys i just say send keys and what i'm going to do i'm going to send the values i just say ejureka okay this is my first name now the second type of x path is your relative x path okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to use your relative x path to identify the next element right i'm going to identify here your surname so can you see this it has already been generated right so what i'm going to do i'm going to say web element s name is equal to driver dot find element by dot x path and i'm going to pass this x path right so now i'm going to what is the operation that i'm going to perform i'm going to perform your send keys operation i just say s name dot send keys so here i'm going to say selenium right so we are not going to create any facebook account with edureka selenium but instead we'll just uh, you know write or send keys and we'll just see what happens okay so now these two are done right now we are going to learn how to write our own x path right In now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use your chrome and i'm going to start writing your own x path right so how do i write it here i have done a f12 okay on this screen if you have to write your own x path then you'll have to do just control f so you will be able to get this editor okay the find by or uh, whatever uh, this uh, bar and now you can start writing your own x path so how do you write it so i just say i'm going to identify the same element and i would show you how your relative x path looks when you generate it and when you write it by yourself right so here i have uh, type class is there something called as id yes perfect i have an id right so what is the syntax of writing an x path here so i just say double slash what is the type there input right it is input so within your square braces you're going to write at the rate id is equal to within single quotes i'm going to use this element right whatever value that i've got and your element has been identified uniquely so how do we get to know that it is unique or not by this attribute that is given one of one which means it is only one element identified right so this is what i'm going to do so the same thing i'm going to write here and we'll compare right we'll compare how it looks so again so i'm going to use this uh, web element s name one is equal to driver dot find element by dot x path and i'm going to pass it right now you can see how the x path looks can you see here so it says star but he here we have specified your tag name and here the values are same but here it starts with the dot which means it is the root node right so this is the difference between your relative x path which is generated and relative x path that you are going to write so most of the times your relative x path might take an attribute which is not unique as well so what actually happens if you don't have your attribute like id name class name or whatever right so in that case it is going to generate an x path in its own way like we uh, we were talking about your independent dependent x paths and different things right so in that case it is going to generate in that way so there are chances that it might end up with not identifying that element as well so always make sure that your x path is always unique and it is able to identify only one element on a web page right so this is how we do next thing that we are going to discuss about is the different ways of handling your dynamic elements in selenium web driver so when i say different dynamic elements what are the dynamic elements i told you one is your id 
which means the address of it keeps changing right so in that case these are the different methods that help you to identify your web elements one is your contains one is your starts with you have another axis okay you say following axis preceding axis following sibling and preceding sibling so all these methods have been designed okay so how do you work with them how do you work with them is what we are going to see so all these methods we are going to use and we are going to work with them as a hands on and we are not just going to read through it so let me go back okay let me go back and what now i'm going to do is here i will say handling dynamic dynamic elements using xpa right so this is just the way of handling it these though these elements are not uh, dynamic i'm just showing you how you handle them in case it is dynamic okay just think that these are dynamic now what we are going to do is we are going to identify this element okay so what it says input type is equal to email class is equal to input text name is equal to email and whatever blah 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 it says right so now another one that you have to check is this one right for your label so now what do you do for this label you can fetch this text and you can see whether this label contains see now it might be email or label and later on it might be just uh, you know uh, now it might be email or phone so after some days think it has been changed to only email address so it now says only email in that case what we are going to do we are going to make use of your a uh, contains method of your x path and then we are going to work with them so how do we identify web element e name i'm sorry email is equal to right or oh, this web element email is equal to driver dot find element okay driver dot find element by dot x path so how do you write your own x path for this in order to write your own x path let me show you here itself so i've already copied this email or phone right so what is the tag which is already we know that is your label correct so this has to be label contains your email text right so this is how you are going to write so what do you say contains this has to be here okay i have just contains and here you're going to pass this text of email so within this i'm going to close this braces right i'm sorry i just you know interchanged it so can you see now it has identified the element uniquely right so this is how you identify the element using your contains method okay so what is that x path using contains method right so we have used your contains method and we have identified the element and the next way of using it is using your starts with method see it is not only with your text it can be also with your attribute so how do we use with your attribute for example say i am using this okay so it says id is equal to email and the class is equal to input text okay so let me take this email itself okay let me take this email itself so what i'm going to do i just say input right so i say contains right what is this at the rate id comma if you give this here can you see even now it has been identified uniquely so this is with attribute so this is with attribute web element email text box is equal to driver dot find element by dot x path and i'm going to pass this x path right so this is using your text method of your x path as we have discussed in the last class this is used to fetch the text of a web element and here the second uh, you know x path talks about the attribute along with the value right so this is how you use your contains method so any attribute for that matter any value for that matter even if is your uh, text field then these two holds good right 
and the next one is handling the uh, dynamic elements using your starts with method there's a method called starts with okay using that method we are going to handle your web elements so how do we work with them for example let me take this forgotten account okay so here it says forgotten account so what i'm going to do i'm just going to take this forgotten and i'm going to check whether it starts with forgotten or not so how do i write it i have to just create the own xpath so here i'm going to say starts hyphen with and i'm going to give this values so what is the value it is your text again text comma if i give this i'm not going to use this forgotten account but instead i'm going to use just forgotten right even then it is going to identify that element uniquely so what does your starts with method do your starts with method checks whether that particular attribute or that particular xpath text starts with a given value there okay so again i am going to identify this web element forgot password is equal to what do i do i say driver dot find element by dot xpath and i'm going to pass this xpath right so again this starts with is along with your text method of your xpath likewise you can also perform the same operation using what using your attribute and your value so if you see here so the attribute which we have is what the attribute which we have is your href okay so let me take this href value the entire value if i take so i know it would be duplicate okay let me take not a problem so web element fgt pwd is equal to driver dot find element by dot xpath right so i'll use this xpath here but the problem is so let us check whether it is unique or not now what i'm going to do i'm going to say a right so starts with starts with here i'm going to give what is it at the rate href is equal to now i'm going to give the value so if you give the value here if just give me one minute at the rate starts okay slash starts with at the rate oh i've given this equals instead of that i'm going to give this right so it has identified but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove some of the text why because so the purpose of your contains or your starts with is what the purpose of your contains or your starts with is to pattern match right it is not to completely give the value but instead to pattern match so that is what i'm doing which starts with your now https www.facebook.com slash recover if i remove this recover then there will be multiple elements can you see here even this is starting with your https facebook.com and you have three such elements one is here which is your forgotten password and the third one is this one right so there are three different elements in that case what i'm going to do i'm going to fetch the second one which is your slash recover so which makes that element unique correct so let me copy this and let me put it across in this code right so both of them are identifying that element a single element with different ways which means using your starts with itself but one with the attribute and value and one with the text method of the xpath uh, you know locator right so now the next one that we are going to talk about is your following preceding that is your access access of your xpath so what actually is this access what does this access talk about so this talks about the root or the structure of your element wherein it is going to talk about the following tags that we have and also the very immediate sibling tag that is uh, considered okay the same way ways you are you can also talk about your preceding access and also the very immediate preceding access so this we are going to you know use when we are working with your web table on a web page okay it is mostly used when you work with your web table because in a web table you have table data in a table row you have multiple columns right in a row there are multiple columns 
so there comes the concept of your following siblings and your following your preceding so all these things so if you see here input i'll show you here in this application itself okay let me show you in this application so if you see here it is td right this is tr and this is td which means this is a table right it is a web table within web table there are table body table rows correct and table data so this is about this particular row but when you go to this next table data so this is the second table data right and next is your tr so when you go with this tr so it is about your this one right you forgot password so that is how you keep moving so what we are going to do is we are going to identify this element okay on a web page by using your following and your following sibling method okay how do we do it so just identify this element okay what does this element says the id is email correct so i'm going to write it here itself so what is it it is your input when i say input what is the attribute that i've taken at the rate id id is equal to i'm going to give this email now since this is the td option i'm going to take the next td option and check what is going to be so if i say following okay and i say td can you see this is the one which has been identified which means it is the next table data present in that particular row if i just following if i just say following input okay can you see this is the one which has been identified so whatever element you provide right whatever element is present that you're giving as an input for your following that particular ident uh, element will be identified so if you have to identify this password you can come from this as well in a web table so i'm going to copy this x path okay and i'm going to add it for your so here i'm going to say x path access okay so the first x path access which we have identified as what for the password i just say driver dot find element by dot x path and i'm going to pass this x path here right so this is using your following access right and the next one that we are going to do is using your following sibling access so how do you identify the following sibling so all you have to do is just give a hyphen say following sibling again uh, you have to give your two uh, colons and then say input okay if the input is not there you will have to go with your td right like this okay so if i am identifying this element so this is the one so this okay let me show you not like this the problem with this is so your tr your tr has a following data right but this has no sibling right so let me starts with start with your tr i just say tr and then i say slash following right following i say sibling and what do i give i give td right so within that this td okay so within that td or let me take this td okay and then i'm going to take this uh, following sibling as input okay so td following sibling following sibling yes input so should i give this or underscore so it is hyphen itself so here what it is going to do so this td has input correct so this td also has an input tag so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to identify this element so how do i do i just say at the rate id is equal to right so following td slash okay here i'm not there is no attribute for this so this is the problem so we'll check another uh, you know element which we have for your following uh, sibling right so for this following sibling i'm going to take another one okay the following is there so this is the one that we are going to identify perfect so okay yes we'll we'll find this so this has the proper following sibling attribute right so i'm going to take this 
so here what we are going to do is we are going with this one okay we are going with this one so let me identify any of this element so it says select options perfect here there are multiple options so what we can do is we are going to select this title as month okay so i'm going to write an x path for this so let me use it like this select right so what was it title at the rate title is equal to month correct so it is identifying this right now what i'm going to do is i'm using this forward slash and i'm going to say following sibling right i'm going to say following sibling and i'm going to give the option so whatever option you want you can start with so here i'm going to take this option okay this option tag at the rate title month following sibling this option should i take this option okay this o is capital right so this option i'm going to take and you can pass any value or you can just take the text so that is how we are going to perform you take the select option and then you're going to work with this so i'm i have chosen your at the rate id now i have taken your month and then i am going to take this so select and then your option so why because so where are we this month is here correct so this month is here so here what am i supposed to do inside this select there's something called as option so that is what we are going to specify here as well right so select slash so following sibling means so this parent you know forwarded by your sibling which means your brother tag or your sister tag likewise so this is going to identify whatever element that you want right let me copy this there are 115 right there are 115 so if you want to go with any of this option then you are going to give the attribute of that particular element and you can start working with this so how do we give again you will have to take the um, option okay if you want to give the option and if you want to place the value or if you want to place the text you can place the text as well so say text or um, value is equal to 3 or text is equal to sorry it was march right so is this the option that we took let me identify that okay here i have following sibling select options text is this the text yeah text is equal to or i can give the value as well so whatever will identify that element uniquely you can just go ahead and take it right so that is how you go with it so this is all about your following sibling right and then let me copy this and let me put it here right so what it says web element month is equal to driver dot find element by dot x path right i'm going to pass this x path here itself all right so now what is this this is using your following sibling act perfect right so this is how we perform and the next one is using your preceding so what does this preceding do this preceding is used to go back right preceding means the previous one so that is what we are going to identify so in this case you can use this as well i mean to say uh, let me open this application okay for your preceding let me take up uh, we have made yes so this is what is getting identified by your following sibling and then what we are going to do is for your select star option yes this is there now your preceding this is what we are going to identify the same element okay you're using your id of your password we are going to identify your preceding element which is your preceding element it is your email correct so now let me go to this okay remove this here i'm going to identify this one so this password type id is equal to path it is again input right double slash did i change something there okay here it has got changed right it was pass right all right so here it was input right within your input at the rate id is equal to what it was pass 
so can you see here now it is identified now what you are doing is you are going to work with your preceding right when you say preceding you're going to take your input again so what is your input that you'll have to uh, consider so if you consider preceding the so preceding right so if you are going to consider this input okay so let me take this right so if you're going to consider this input then okay this is closed here this is a new one so what we can do is we are going to take your td okay and then we are going to take this so whatever we want did i give the proper oh right so there's an additional e that i've given i'm sorry for that okay yeah so what it is i have used this preceding td i have to use this td if i use this td it is going to take this one right which is your email right your label has been identified why because it is going back right it is just going back and it is going to identify this td this td let me show you here so this td right is not considered because it is the uh, next immediate tag but instead it is going to consider this tag right this td has been identified likewise you can take and uh, work with any number of elements that you want and you can go backwards and forwards this, this is about your access when you talk about your x path okay so apart from this uh, we have already discussed your text method okay how your text method work right so likewise uh, here grouping and indexing we'll have to talk about so let's talk about your grouping and indexing so this is about your preceding siblings so like your uh, following sibling you go with your preceding sibling as well so if you want just uh, we'll do one thing i'll show you the same application so your facebook application and for this your following sibling instead of this following sibling for your month what you can do is take this value and just pass it here i'm going to change this to be preceding okay so i just say preceding sibling can you see what is getting identified it is going to identify this particular option of your day right so this is how the preceding option is identified so what what we are doing here we are identifying your month using your month we are just going backwards right so that is how we identify this particular element right so this is about your siblings and your access okay and the next one that we have to discuss about is your groups and indexing what do you mean by groups and indexing so when you talk about your web elements on a web page sometimes there always might be so this is the demo okay this one application that you have given you can use this demo you may write your different experts using different uh, you know functions to enhance your understanding so this is going to be your what to say assignment so before that we are going to see how do we group them uh, group the uh, elements and how do we provide indexes okay so here i'm going to say grouping and indexing okay oh i'm sorry this is there so this month i'm going to add it here let me add it here here i'm going to call it as day and here i'll be changing it to preceding right so this is how it works now so what do you mean by groups and indexes think that in your application so if you see here if you go to this particular radio button okay here you have id okay and here also you have id but the ids might change right the ids might change for example if you take this right if you take this what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this element wait let me go here okay so this is nothing but the title i'm going to identify this select at the rate title is equal to right i have got it what if i want to select this option what if i want to select this option so what i'm going to do here i'm going to identify this element okay instead of this we need that as well just hold on so what i'm going to do option at the rate value is equal to 1 sorry value is equal to 1 right now can you see here there are two elements that have been identified one is for your month 
okay if you see one is for will be for your month and the other one will be for your date so even your date has the value one and for the second element if you go here can you see here your jan months also has value called one in this case how do you identify that particular element and how do you work with them so which means multiple elements of a same kind right so in that case think that this also doesn't have any elements i mean to say any id which is identifying it uniquely in that case if it is grouped within a class and how do you identify elements which are of multiple and which belongs to the same attribute and value in that case what we are going to do is we are going to use groups and indexes what do you mean by groups and indexes so you are going to identify this particular element okay and you're going to provide an index to it when i say index it is about its position can you see here now it says one of one and when you mouse over this you will be able to see this is belong this belongs to your month which means this particular element right so that is how it work correct so this is all about your groups and indexing so you group that x path and you are going to assign a index value to it so that that becomes unique but one problem with your groups and indexing is again when the application is in the development phase never ever follow your groups and indexes why because if you follow your groups and indexing when an application you know changes its web elements think there is an additional value or additional web element that is added in that case the class might change the class number might change the index might change so that is the reason we are not going to work with your groups and indexing in your real time but how do we group it we just say web element i can call it as month is equal to driver dot find element by dot x path and i'm going to pass this x path option oh it's not there okay no problem let me write it select no not select it was option at the rate value is equal to 1 and after this i had grouped it right i had grouped it here i'm sorry and i had given a index to this which means 2 right so this is how we are going to work with them got it so this is basically how you group the element all right so this is all about your x path so what did we learn in your x path what is an x path and why do we use x path what are the different ways of generating an x path right so the two plugins that we basically use in order to work with your x path and then the different types of finding the address of an element using your x path so one is your absolute x path which starts from the root node second one is your relative x path so which actually starts from the current node right and the next methods is using your attribute and the value you can write your own x path wherein you give the tag name and then specify the attribute and specify the value and next one is your text method which helps you to identify the text of a web element clear and next we learned about the axis of your x path we use following axis we use preceding axis we use following sibling and preceding sibling so apart from that we also have something called as uh, you are grouping and indexing which is rarely used but if the application is stable you can still try to find the web element using your grouping and indexing and the next one is about your you know independent and dependent x path wherein your independent and dependent x path is when the element is not stable then you go with the previous uh, element which is stable and then you're going to use that element and identify the next one right so class so these are the different ways of identifying web elements using your x path your x path is very important i uh, there's already um, an assignment given to you so you can start practicing all right so the next concept that we are going to discuss in today's session would be about the weights so what do you mean by weights why do we use this weights uh, is what we are going to discuss now 
So when, when we start working with the application, you might have observed that when you're trying to uh, find an element or when you're trying to perform any operation, there seems to be a gap between the speed of your Selenium's execution and also the speed of the internet, right? There comes sync between, there should be a sync between the execution of your Selenium and the execution of your internet. But our internet does not support the speed that our Selenium uh, you know, has. So now what we are going to do, in order to sync them up, we are going to work with something called as wait. Okay, so first we are going to see how this internet connection speed is going to hamper the execution of your Selenium. For example, say I'm going to create a class called login to Gmail. Okay, let's just uh, check. So now I'm going to use my Firefox or Chrome or whichever you want is fine. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this gmail go to gmail.com okay now i'll start identifying the elements you can identify the elements using your firebug or by uh, you know just using your f12 even that work so if you see here i have the input id so now i'm going to use this id here what do i say the first thing that i'll have to do is create your or launch your browser right let me copy these two lines so created it here i've launched the browser now next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to launch the application so what is the application https www.gmail.com correct so this is done so the next thing is i'm going to identify the username field so how do i identify web driver okay sorry web element u name is equal to driver dot find element by dot id right so i'm going to pass this id oh i'm sorry so hit this id i'm going to pass what is the id here it is your identifier id so let me place it here right so i'll import this web element perfect so now what i'm going to do i'm going to pass these keys in order to log in so what is the key that i'm going to pass i'll just say you name dot send keys so i have already created a sample uh, account okay which says edureka selenium edureka at the rate gmail.com okay so this is what i'm going to you so is it selenium edureka or edureka selenium okay we'll see all right the next one is your clicking on this next button right so let me identify this particular button and i'll click on next can you see here it says pan class and it has text so i'm going to write my own xpath so what would be my xpath i would say driver dot find element by dot what is it xpath right so how do i write it the tag is pan and what am i using i'm going to use the text of it so text is equal to i'm going to pass this and i'm going to perform this click operation so i'm going to pass this entire text which i have copied i'll paste it here and i'll click on this next button now it is going to the next page so what is my scenario i have to click on this password field correct so the password field here is uh what do i have type again data value and then i have input class type data initial name is equal to password there's no id so i'm going to fetch this name so what do i do i say web element pwd is equal to i just say driver dot find element by dot name right so using this name i'm going to work with this password so pwd is it dot pwd dot send keys and I'm going to pass this send keys, which is your Apple one, two, three, four, five. So this is a password. So once after I perform this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this next button to click on next. So here I would be working with your next button. Driver dot find element by dot. What is it? Again, XPath. I'm going to write and I'm going to write the XPath here. Pan. 
again this text is equal to next correct so this is what i'm going to use all right and i will click on this right i would click on this so once this is done so let me enter the password what am i going to do apple one two three four five i'll click on this next button it is going to log into your application am i right so it is going to log into your application so this is what i would be working okay i would be performing so let me run this code let us check if this works fine or not all right so here let me remove this i don't have to give the entire path instead i'm going to insert this dot which always refers to the current node okay that is your current directory so let me run this program and see what is going to happen so now it is going to launch your browser right and then it is going to navigate through the url yes it is navigating through your url and then it is going to enter your username click on next button so it is taking time ideally it shouldn't take but that's okay right it is loading 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 all right i don't know why it is taking so long time to just navigate through your gmail but still right so it is navigating shall i close it launch again all right it has navigated this click on next button so now it is not entering your password but if you just go back if you just go back to your console and check what is the problem it says no such element exception so unable to locate method name selector password can you see this line it says there is something called as no such element exception so we have identified that particular element correctly we have seen uh, whether it is identifiable or not and everything is taken right by why it is still showing it as wrong is our question right so what actually happens when you are working with your selenium as i told you the speed of your selenium is much faster than your internet if in case your selenium does not or is not able to locate any element on a web page it is going to throw an exception called as no such element exception so how do we handle this the there are two ways of handling this one is using your page load timeout okay so this page load timeout helps you to wait until the page gets loaded completely the second one is the most effective one which is your implicitly wait okay so there are totally five different types of waits that we are going to use in your selenium the first one is your implicitly wait the second one is your explicitly wait third is your fluent wait fourth is your uh, page load timeout and the fifth one is your set script timeout so these are the five different types of waits that we have in your selenium but the mostly used waits and the important waits are your implicit wait and your explicit wait so we're going to see what are the uses of these five waits and where do we use it and when do we use it first of all we are discussing about your implicitly wait what do you mean by implicitly wait is this wait waits until the web element or any element that is present on a web page so this implicitly wait is used basically with two methods of your selenium which are they one is your find element that and the second one is your find element right so these are the two methods which are supported by your implicitly wait so this is basically used to identify a element on a web page got it so in case this element is present then it is going to return the address of that web element okay and what actually happens with your implicitly wait is you are going to provide the number of seconds or the time unit that you have to make your selenium to wait for okay so your implicitly wait supports your seconds milliseconds nanoseconds microseconds days hours okay so likewise there are multiple time units that your implicitly wait is going to support so for example let me write this implicitly waits syntax 
so how do we do it i just say driver dot manage okay driver dot manage dot time outs i say time outs dot implicitly wait can you see this it is taking two arguments one is the integer value that is your long data type which can be the number here okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to pass this number there's some problem okay now it came up so this is what i'm going to do and then the second one is your time units this one is your time units so time units when i say you have to specify this time unit okay and then if you specify here can you say it supports days it supports hours microseconds milliseconds minutes nanoseconds and seconds right you can specify the time like this now what are we doing we are going to make your selenium to wait for a maximum of 10 seconds until the element is found on a web page so basically when you're working with implicitly wait this you have to specify only once which would be considered throughout the program throughout the script this implicitly wait is going to be considered all right so now what is it doing going to do will it wait for the entire 10 seconds no what it actually does is it has a polling period of 500 millisecond so what it does it is going to poll for every 500 milliseconds which means it is going to go to the application check whether that element is present or not if it is not present it is going to come back wait for 500 milliseconds and again go back and check whether that application is um, that element is present or not and then again it comes back if it is not present if the element is present when it polls and the element is present then it is going to continue with the execution normally without waiting for the complete time unit that you have provided so this is one of the basic and the important weights that you are going to use in your scripting when you start working with your framework got it so this is how we work now let me run this program with your implicitly wait okay so let me run the program with your implicitly waits and check what it is going to do now it is uh, launch the browser it is navigating through the url again it might take time but we'll see whether it gets loaded fast or not i don't know today it is taking time ideally it won't okay right so it is navigating through the url it is taking time i'm sorry for that all right so once it loads it is going to enter your username it is going to click on your next button so once after the page gets loaded so it is going to type in your password and then we'll see what it is going to perform right so it has to click on your next button and it has to take you to your inbox that is your it should allow you to log in successfully correct so so it is taking time to log in navigate through the url all right so now it is navigated enter the username clicked on next button all right so it has entered your password and it has logged into the application got to got to know how this works right so this is how your waits would work which means it is going to wait until that element is present as soon as that element is found it is going to enter the value to that element and it is going to continue with its execution got it so this is the use of your implicit wait now another question what if we don't find that element even after 10 seconds even after 10 seconds of time if that element is not found then what it is going to do in case of your implicitly wait it is going to throw no such element exception even after 10 seconds or even after the times units that you have specified and the element is not present on that web page got it so these are the important points that you will have to keep in mind one is your time implicitly wait is restricted to your find element and find elements method secondly it will support multiple time units like seconds microseconds milliseconds nanoseconds days hours and thirdly it has a five, uh, polling period of 500 milliseconds 
if the element is found after a certain time unit it is going to continue with the execution and the fourth point is if that element is not found even after the specified time unit it is going to throw what it is going to throw no such element exception but in case of your implicitly wait and if at all the locator that you have provided is always correct then there is no chance that you are going to get your no such element exception got it so in in that case you can specify hours as well so it doesn't bother it doesn't matter okay so if i run it with hours even then it is going to work in the same way so what it is going to do it is going to launch the application navigate through the url and then it is going to enter your username password and then click on next button and it allows you to log in so there's no much different got it so now what we are going to know is the next type of weight that we have is your explicitly weight what does your explicitly weight do so when you have any uh, conditions to be met or when you have any conditions beyond using your find element and find elements in that case we go with your explicitly weight so in your selenium your explicitly weight is also called as web driver weight okay web driver weight is a class which is which helps you to achieve or which helps you to work with your conditional based weighting in your selenium okay so how do we work with this if you want me to wait here so let me wait for another um, you no know, 5 seconds to check whether this works fine or not else we are going to continue okay so still taking time yeah it now work so can you see next next right it has logged in so no problem with it correct so even if it is ours no ma no matter what it is going to uh, identify the element and it is going to work right so the next one that we are going to do here is your explicitly way so this is about your implicitly weight we'll go with your explicitly weight so i'm going to create it here itself explicitly weight explicitly weight correct so now what we are going to do as soon as you launch your application and log into your uh, application what we are going to do is we are going to compose an email just click on this compose button so that is more than enough so what we are doing we are going to click on your compose button so how does this work so will will your implicitly weight be enough to work with this obviously not why because it is not going to wait until this particular uh, you know page loads okay so that is when you go with either your page load timeout or your explicitly wait most of the times we prefer your web driver wait instead of your page load timeout so how do we work with your explicitly wait i told you there is a class called a web driver wait which helps you to work with your explicit waiting so your web driver wait takes two arguments one is your web driver object that is the control which your selenium has over the browser and the second one is your time units so in your web driver wait you have to keep in mind is your web driver wait is going to support only one time unit which is your seconds so like your implicitly wait it is not going to you know support the time units like hours days or whatever so it is only seconds which is supported here so when how do we use this explicitly wait is so you have certain conditions to be met for example say wait dot you have multiple methods until expected conditions you have something called as expected conditions this expected condition class has multiple methods okay if you see here so these are the static methods alert is present attribute contains attribute to be element selection state to be right and then you have frame to be available and invisibility of all elements and then number of windows number of elements presence of all elements text to be present in element title is url contents and url to be any and visibility of your elements as well so in this case what you are going to do is you are going to 
use any of this method and you're going to work with this. So what you're going to do here, I'm going to use this title is okay. Using this title is method, I'm going to wait and check what is going to happen. So now if I am going to use this and I'm going to find out the title of this particular page. So here in your head, you will find something called as title tag. So where's where's title title is here, right? So title is here. This is what you have to do. So title is this one. Okay, you don't have to give this, uh, you know, complete title. Okay, you can give uh, any any partial title as well. But most of the times make sure that you're giving the entire title or you can also go with something like this. Wait until what we are going to do expected conditions dot you can say element or visibility of element. So you have here visibility of web element. So find a web element and you can use this. OK, I say compose. So before that I would have identified that web element. So I say web element compose is equal to driver dot find element by dot by dot. I'm going to write my own X part to find that compose element. So let me click on this compose. OK, so what it is, it is div and I'm going to fetch this text, right? So how do I write it? I'm going to say div. I'm going to say text is equal to within single quotes. I am going to give this web element. So now once it is done, I'm going to say compose dot click, right? I say compose dot click. So using multiple conditions, you can perform operations. So let me close this. Okay, let me close this. Now let me run my code and check what is going to happen, right? So now it is again uh, launching the browser, navigating through the URL. And then now it just enters the username, password, logs into the application, and then waits until the compose element is present. And then it is going to click on this compose button. All right. So it is going to take a little time, it seems. Okay. So let's wait for some time. So it is now uh, navigating through the URL. Go ahead. Okay, all right. Just navigating, navigating, navigating. It is taking time. Okay, so we'll wait. No other go, right? So all right. Okay. So why is it taking so long time? Is what I'm wondering about. When we when we do it manually, it is taking perfect. So it is navigating through the URL, entered the username, password, next button, and then it is waiting until the page gets loaded completely and then just clicking on your compose, right? So this is how your explicitly wait works, right? Again, your explicitly wait can be used for your find element on and also your find elements as well, but it is not restricted to anything. You can also have your conditions satisfied using your web driver wait. So that is why we call it as your explicitly wait wherein it waits for a explicit condition. All right. And like your um, implicitly wait, it is also going to wait for 500 milliseconds, what we call it as a polling period. So every four, 500 millisecond, it is going to poll and it is going to check whether that particular element is present or not. If that element is not present, then it is going to wait until this time unit is completed. If this time unit is completed and still it is not able to identify the element or it is not able to satisfy the condition, then it is going to throw time out exception. Got it? This is one of the important questions that you guys would face in your interview. What is the difference between your implicit weight and your explicit weight? So implicit weight is restricted for your find element and find elements. And implicit weights, um, you know, support multiple time units like your hours, days, milliseconds, seconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, etc. Wherein your uh, web driver weight or your explicitly weight can be used for any uh, conditions to be met along with your find element and find elements. It supports only time unit, which is your seconds. And implicitly weight 
throws no such element exception if in case the element is not found even after the time unit but your web driver wait or your explicitly wait is going to throw timeout exception right so these are the two important weights in your selenium so apart from that we have another weight also called as fluent weight which can be a, a replaceable statement for your implicitly weight your fluent weight is also used to uh, find the element so i'll show you how it works okay so how you have to do is there is a class called wait okay there's a class called uh, sorry there's an interface called wait which helps you to work with your fluent weight okay so you're going to create a reference variable okay you can pass your web driver there as well so what it takes is you need your fluent weight class in order to run it okay so it is going to take the driver object as your input okay it is going to take the driver object as your input and then let me remove this or i can use your uh, web driver as well okay since i've passed it we don't have to provide so now what we are going to do is we can say wait dot so if you see here there is a function called with wait so here you don't have to go we have two weights so let me continue here itself dot you have a method called wait with the timeout right where is it with the timeout here it takes two arguments one is your duration and the second one is your time unit again here the time unit has multiple units that is supported like you can take your seconds days hours and whatever but you can specify the polling period by yourself so how do you give you say polling period so here you give duration say uh, i give this one second okay you can change your polling period here i just say polling period time unit dot seconds and you can also make it to ignore some exception so here if i see ignoring you're going to give your no such element exception no such element exception dot class you should always specify this right so this is how you give your fluent way so if you give your fluent weight like this it will be a statement which can replace your which can replace your so here i'll make it as weight one okay because there are two weights so it is going to replace your timeouts and i mean implicitly weights and it is going to work the similar way so i've just commented the implicitly weight line and we'll see how this works right so the next two are your page load timeout and your script uh, set script timeout so what does your page load timeout do your page load timeout is used to wait or make your driver wait until the page has loaded completely but this page load timeout will never work on your um, selenium it rarely works so most of the times we don't use it at all okay so we'll see well, once after this runs i'll show you how to set your page load timeout and why do we use this set script timeout so this set script timeout is used for example think that you have uh, what to say a script okay so which means a script which is an external script like your javascript we have which you have embedded inside your selenium script right in that case you are going to set right the time for your okay so there is something which happened back side okay here it says no such element exception can you see your your fluent weight is also not able to identify your element so the polling period i've given it as okay, let me give it as 5 seconds and let me run so this fluent weight and your page load timeout and your set script timeout are um, you know very very difficult they are kind of obsolete in your 3.3 i mean 3 version onwards they don't work but still we'll check how if it works or not last time when i tried it was working in this time when i try it is not working so that is how it works okay so yeah we were talking about your set script timeout so in that case you're going to set the time for that script to run in that case in, in that case what happens if that script is taking more than the you know 
permitted time more than the specified time then you are going to mark that script as failed and you're going to continue with your execution so I'll, I'll show you how to set it so let us see whether this uh, fluent wait works or not so according to me it, it won't work most of the times it doesn't work because uh, you know, that is the reason we usually work with your explicit weights and implicit weights and uh, if you are working with your framework when you start developing your framework you'll understand the use of your um, explicitly weight and implicitly weight all right see now again it is throwing an exception it is not working right it says unable to locate your element which is your what to say password right so your implicit weight is always better so let's go with your implicit weight itself right so let me remove this now yes i told you i'm going to show you how to work with your page load timeout right so let me use this here so it is very much simple and similar like your so driver dot manage dot timeouts dot you say page load timeout again it is going to take the arguments like your uh, number and the what time unit you have to specify so again it supports multiple time okay so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this program with your implicitly wait and check whether it is going to wait until the page is loaded or not let me make it as 30 seconds okay and check whether it is going to load this or not and i'm going to click on your compose button okay so here let me okay so this also i'm going to comment okay so now run run this so again it won't work but still it's a try all right so just for you guys to know what are the different types of weights that we have and how they actually work okay so that is what we are trying to do here okay it is still taking time to load so let it load and now when it loads we are going to check what does it do okay so and yeah we were talking about your set script so the set script is for the external scripts if you will have to run so next next it is loading and then it is going to click on your compass did you see your page load timeout has worked right but your fluent wait did not work but most of the times your fluent wait works and your page load timeout doesn't work so that is how it is so again like on the same lines of your page load timeout you're going to i'm sorry you're going to set your script timeout as well driver dot manage dot timeouts dot set script timeout so if you have any external script to be run you can start running your script here okay time unit dot okay you can give it and you can make that to run for a specified uh, time and after that you can just if it uh, doesn't complete if it doesn't run then you can uh, just fail it and you can continue with your execution so this is all about your what to say uh, web driver weights okay so this is how you automate one of the scenario in your application and once you wait until like your title for example say it is, see once in your uh, automation script your validation becomes very important right just logging into this application will not make any sense right just logging into the application will not make any sense how do you validate whether that application has been logged in so whether we were able to log into that application successfully or not there are different ways of validating it one by capturing the uh, title of it or two by just identifying that whether that element is present on that application or not or see for example whatever we have done here right so you identified whether this element is present or not that is one kind of validation or you can uh, you know on this web page you can identify any element for that matter you can identify this element and you can check whether it is logged in or not so likewise we validate and then we uh, mark it as passed or fail okay so that is about your validation and that is how we work with the multiple weights in your selenium so we'll see whether we have identified and learned about all the weights so let me go through the slide once 
so weights in selenium so what is weight why do we use weights so weights for the page to load or weights for the particular web element to appear so these are the five different weights that we have understood like so what is implicit weight we know what is explicitly weight we know we know what is your fluent weight as well can you see here we have used this fluent weight but it not, did not work for us and then we have something called as page load timeout so fortunately it worked and then you have something called as set script timeout so since we don't have any script we did not work on it as a hands on so now here is your second assignment so write a program to open the website of facebook.com on the same similar lines we have done that on your gmail so use weights to wait until the website and its elements are loaded completely so once it is loaded sign into your facebook using your id and password okay so this is what we are supposed to do as an assignment so the same program i have told you on gmail you guys can try it on your facebook all right so now so uh, we spoke about your validation as well what do you mean by validation so it means checking or verifying whether the ui elements are rendered properly or not right so this is how we validate either you can fetch any web element on a web page or you can uh, verify the title and you can check whether your script has passed or not right so next see your page title we have identified and the commands this validation commands are used to check whether the element is enabled it's disabled or it's selected right so this is the validation commands that we have and we have seen right so browser profiling in selenium what do you mean by browser profiling so most of the time we don't use this profiling but still let me show you how do you create profiles so when you go to your normal um, browser so you will have your bookmarks your uh, downloads your history everything would have got recorded right so but when you want a new and fresh browser to be launched then you go with your browser profiling which means you create a profile for a specific user wherein that user would not get any bookmarks or whatever has been performed on your browser how do you do it is just uh, close your uh, browser if it's already open and go to this run you all you have to do to get this is just press your windows and r key enter the uh, command firefox.exe space hyphen p right so just click on this enter so once you click on enter so this choose user profile pop up would come up and then all you have to do is just create a profile for the user okay create profile click on next provide a name let me give the name as edge breaker and then i'm going to click on finish okay so once you finish just say start firefox okay so now when the firefox sta uh, starts so you would be able to see a fresh firefox okay so once you go to your normal firefox you can see the plugins right you will be able to see the plugins that has been uh, downloaded but if you can observe if you observe this particular firefox browser there's no plugins which we had downloaded so this is how you create your profiles and show a fresh browser page to your users if you want all right so this is about your session so in this session what we what did we discuss about we discussed about the different expats the the different ways of identifying an element using your expats all right and then we saw uh, what are the different types of weights that is present in your selenium which helps us to work with your automation scripts we saw what is validation how to perform validation and we also saw how to create a new browser profile without a bookmarks and any plugins that has been added so if you have any questions please feel free to get back to us you have our support numbers you can still drop us an email and get your questions clarified all right so here is my request your comments your feedback be it compliment be it a suggestion be it a complaint we are open to it so once after your sessions are done please do take a survey let us know how we did so that if it's a suggestion let us incorporate it for the next time 
And if it's a compliment, we would be very happy to know that we are going good and we are doing good. So let's continue to do the same. All right. So let's meet in the next class and we are going to discuss about uh, what different types of controls that we have on a web page. All right. Until then, see you guys. And, um, you know, my request is please perform whatever or repeat whatever we have done. Practice what we have done and get back to the next class so that it would be helpful for you and also for me to guide you further. All right. See you then. Meet you in the next class. Bye-bye.